I found China's plans for world domination. Yeah, I'm not even joking. China's trying to take over the world. China's intents and ambitions have changed drastically. I found the blueprints that really show that China isn't satisfied with just sitting in the background and waiting for its time to shine. No, China's going for world dominance and I'm not just talking about economically. You really have to understand the Chinese language to see what China's planning because what they show to non-Chinese speakers, like maybe you, is very different than what they show to their domestic populace or native Chinese speakers. China's doing something really bad. Let me ask you guys a question. You still use an iPhone 3G or a Samsung Galaxy S2? Probably not, right? So let me ask you another question. Do you still use a traditional wallet? You know those bulky things that sit in your pocket and leave a big lump? Those unsightly things that take up way too much real estate in your pants? Well, if you are, I highly recommend you switch over to an extra wallet. It is the coolest wallet in the world and still to this day, the only wallet I've ever been complimented on. With a push of a button, your cards conveniently fan out. There's plenty of space to put everything, yet it doesn't take up a lot of space. It looks super classy, comes in all kinds of different colors and finishes, and I absolutely love it. If you go to shop.exter.com slash 86 you're gonna get a massive discount site-wide, but also, when you go to checkout, make sure you use the code LAWAI86 because you're gonna get a further discount on top of that. When you do that, you're gonna get the coolest wallet in the world, and not only that, you're gonna be supporting the channel, so thanks. It all comes down to China's fortress. Under current dictator Xi Jinping, China is transforming itself into a fortress with the intent of conquering world leadership. Understanding the four pillars of this fortress could perhaps help world leadership to understand how to stop China's new ambitions and how to better counter China in general. I used to entertain the idea that China would keep to itself. Despite going from a thriving, liberalizing world player to a glorified North Korea with money, I still thought that China would try to probably keep its best interests in mind and close itself off back into obscurity in relative silence. Because it always does. China goes from a world power to obscure hermit state time and time again. And China's doing this again. It's closing down. It's removing what little freedoms were left and stoking Han Chinese ethno-state nationalism and getting ready for another round of, let's see why fascism and one-party strongman dictatorship leadership doesn't work again. Typically, when we see a country fall into obscurity through authoritarianism and isolation, we see global influence, power, and danger be limited to its own people. A really good example is Turkmenistan. This hermit state is one of the least free countries in the world and really rivals North Korea in its bizarre authoritarian dictatorship style with its mandated white marble buildings and laws like having to wash your car before you even come into the capital. The dictator's handbook becoming a statue that reads quotes out of a loudspeaker throughout the day and policies for citizens that limit all freedom of speech, freedom of movement and leaving period. You just can't leave Turkmenistan. This obscurity is what makes these nations relatively harmless on the global stage. They only really hurt themselves. But this is where China differs. Since 1949, when Chairman Mao took over, China has innovated almost nothing. Other than the starvation of tens of millions of people, but that's hardly innovation, that's just death. What China did do is become a manufacturing hub for pretty much the entire world. You don't believe me? Look at the world's biggest trade partner, the USA, go from dominance only to be completely surpassed by China. China didn't need to invent anything. They didn't need to innovate. They didn't need to change. The West foolishly believed that given access to money and capitalism, China would be able to change and become friendly to the West. So the money poured in. For the past 40 years, American and other Western companies and governments have been dumping trillions of dollars of investment into China with no requirements in return. It's basically like this. Here's money, China. Now we've got a good thing going here, so please don't steal our tech and intellectual property and please consider allowing your citizens some more freedoms, maybe liberalize a little bit. You know what China's response to that always was? Nah. And by the way, if you want the privilege of investing in our country, our glorious China, then you're gonna have to give us the lion's share of the profit and control. Oh, and also, we're gonna steal all of your intellectual property, military tech, and hack you until we get everything we need. 
And then we're gonna kick you out of China after attracting years of investment. Also, we can close off again. And this time, we're gonna close off with money and leverage over the entire world's economy. So now that you understand the basic idea, let's look at this fortress that Xi Jinping is building to finish it off once and for all and become the world power. To understand the fortress, you have to understand the goal. The goal is to build a post-Western world, a world where innovation isn't necessary anymore. It's just a world where China controls what countries do to its own benefit. Freedom and human rights do not belong in this world. It's just state leadership that benefits those at the top of the state. That's really the only goal. The base of the fortress is economic, commercial, and financial. China has had 40 years to develop, and while it's absolutely nowhere near finished, in fact, it's very poor in much of the country, it is at a point where Xi Jinping has decided that it's done. One of the things that Xi Jinping decided he'd be famous for in history was the eradication of poverty in China. Poverty wasn't eradicated, by the way, guys. I don't know why people even believe this ridiculous statement. It's not even close, but Xi Jinping said it was and then made it illegal to say that there's still poverty in China, so that's good enough, I guess. Anyway, 40 years of globalization has put China in a position where the elite are well off enough and hold enough power to control the country. Enough foreign tech has been stolen and nationalized, and China now has domestic brands dominating national manufacturing. There's no more need for foreign brands for many things. From electric cars to refrigerators, China has a domestic equivalent, albeit a worse quality one, for nearly everything. Don't be fooled, China doesn't need to make things very well. They only figured out how to make a ballpoint pen, for God's sakes, a few years ago. But they make enough stuff domestically to satiate China's own needs. All the while, China's trying to reduce the world's dependence on the dollar. It's already gotten Russia and some of the Middle East on board with its pursuit of this digital yuan, the dream of de-dollarizing the world. The next pillar of this fortress is political and ideological control. COVID-19 has turned the world into chaos, but for China, well, it's even more chaotic. Xi Jinping's zero COVID policy has created absolute chaos and dissent. From Chinese people begging for their children not to be taken away, to quarantine camps, to month after month of weld you into your house level lockdowns, leading to suicide, starvation, and absolute madness. To the COVID quarantine camps turning China into a medical slave state. To the absolute stagnation of the economy because of said lockdowns, you would think that China would be on the brink of revolution at this point. I mean, you do this anywhere else and people are gonna stand up. But quite the contrary. COVID has been the greatest gift to the Chinese government that's ever been given to anyone. A surveillance system that literally tracks everywhere you go at all times, limits everything you can do down to a QR code. You cannot go shopping. You cannot get on public transport. You cannot go through a toll booth. You cannot take your kids to school. You cannot go to work. You cannot literally exist without a green QR code. If it turns yellow or red, you stay where you are in lockdown, and if you try to escape, you go to jail. If you try to escape these lockdowns, like many have, you will be tracked with facial recognition and stopped in your tracks with one of China's 540 million surveillance cameras run by the state. China has more surveillance cameras than the population of the United States. The ability to track and stop anyone, anywhere, at any time, has now become realized. Do you get that? This is not like some future goal. This is not a movie script. This is done. It's already finished. This capability is real. Every single thing you do, motion you make, word you type, person you speak to, everything is tracked and documented and you cannot escape. It's literally that bad. Imagine if Kim Jong-un didn't have to rely on secret police. It's kind of like that. China is now a technologically controlled dungeon of slaves that cannot do anything that the state deems unsavory. You can't complain, you go to jail. You can see how effective this has actually become. People always said, if you take away Chinese people's money, then they'll finally stand up and overthrow the government. But people across much of China are not even getting paid anymore. I've gotten reports from people north to south that haven't received wages from not only companies, but state jobs as well. Do you see or hear anything about that? Exactly. The cult of personality surrounding Xi has now reached Mao caliber. 
Xi's thoughts are mandated and taught at all levels of education, and citizens in one of the 100 million government jobs are quizzed daily on Xi Jinping's ideology. And there's pillar three, state surveilled slavery. With a God figure at the top, dictating every move of every citizen. Done. Pillar four, the final beam in the structure of this fortress for China's world domination, is the destruction of the US and Western alliances and spheres of influence, including Japan and South Korea, etc. While simultaneously forcing and strengthening and modernizing China's military and nuclear arsenal. This is done by bringing developing countries into its economic servitude, solidifying allies like Russia and other countries that oppose the West and democracy in general, and amplifying propaganda, hacking, disruption tactics, and sowing political division, and many more underhanded things. China is employing countless influencers, buying politicians, and sending millions of bots and paid trolls to sway online opinion. I've seen people that you would never think to be pro-Chinese government being swayed by paid agents who go out there and spread information that preys on the division in current American society. People don't even have to end up pro-Chinese government in the end, that's not the goal. They just have to contribute to the collapse of Western society. I've seen a massive uptick in this after China allied with Russia after the Ukraine invasion. These treasonous scumbags who contribute to seeing division in the West because China co-opted them to do it, either ended up richer or they get paid in clout and followers, but they end up getting away with it because they are protected by free speech laws. It's the very definition of using America's system against itself. China blocks all Western social media, but it uses it for its own government agendas to contribute to the downfall of Western systems and democracies. Beyond ideology, China is modernizing its military capabilities to the point where it knows it will have to face down the US in battle at some point in the future. Whether it be over Taiwan or some other future conflict, China aims to weaken the US and its allies and then strike when it's divided to the point where morale is too low for Americans to even stand up for themselves. Now, here's the deal. All this doom and gloom that I just spouted is China's plan. But all of this hinges on China pulling this dystopian nightmare off. They have successfully neutered their own populace and crushed any and all dissent. So even if worse comes to worse and everything collapses, the government still does have ultimate control over their people. But the only real way this can work is for people around the world to roll over and accept it. To basically say, yeah, sure, China, whatever, take over, go for it. Without investment or supporting China, China can do nothing. The rest of the world investing in China, expecting it to reform, is why we got here in the first place. It's why I'm making this video now. If people stop feeding the monster, it dies. The monster is still in servitude to other countries' economies. Sanctions, rooting out Chinese intelligence, not allowing China to participate in international bodies or having any sway over organizations like the UN, banning Chinese apps and media like TikTok, punishing officials and people responsible for the current Uyghur genocide, stopping trade partnerships, for God's sakes, removing or preventing these old assholes that got into power because of China trade, and the people who want to keep it that way. Faced with all this, people are like, yeah, whatever, let's just keep investing in China. Did people or companies or politicians ever push people to invest in the Soviet Union or Nazi Germany? Yeah, let's invest in the country, the enemy nation that is trying to rip your own country to shreds. The country that has already enslaved 1.4 billion of its own citizens with its sights set on the rest of the world. Let's sell them our farmland. Let's sell them our key industries and ports. Let's allow them to have social media accounts on free speech platforms like YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or Rumble or True Social. It doesn't matter what side you're on. China is taking advantage and sowing dissent and division in American society. Oh, and by the way, let's invite them to dictate what's taught in our schools and what is off limits in our educational institutes. Let's allow Chinese government access to major IP and chip technology to continue to copy and add to its military prowess, which will be used against the rest of the world. Let's invest and support the country whose dictator just told their citizens to prepare for war and that the US and the free world are their mortal enemies. Yeah, let's do that. 
Great idea. Many of these notes that I actually used while making this video actually coincided with a fantastic article I read by Sylvain Sorrell. I put his article in the description below and it highlights the four pillar idea very clearly in a text form. So I hope you guys can give it a read and share that out as well. If you guys wanna know what's happening in China on the ground, or in the news or anything that's current events related in China. I have a live show every single Friday called The China Show. I need you guys to go over there and subscribe to that channel and check it out. It's jam packed full of current events and news and also a bunch of humor and lifestyle stuff. It's just great if you wanna get your finger on the pulse of China in general. So definitely go check that out.